Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to look at another problem which occurs in a junior model uh, Worcester Green Star combination boilers um, and if you see a leak coming from the right hand side manifold which is the return manifold of the boiler um, you can very easily or as most of the people very easily mistake it for a leaking turbine or a turbine adapter but if you see a leak or marks especially at the back of this manifold uh, build up of lime scale and whiteness at the back mostly around the top back of this manifold then uh, it would almost always mean that the manifold itself has started to leak from the manufactured joints and it's not something which is repairable so you will have to replace the manifold itself and you can see is that it will drip mostly from the right hand side all right so to start with it we will isolate all the valves uh, we'll leave the gas valve on the heating flow and return valves isolated cold water inlet isolated and a drain hose pipe connected to the drain point and we've opened the drain valve up um, so and i've removed the diverter valve motor to allow it to come to the middle it's uh, always a good idea to push this paddle manually downwards because it can sometimes with the pressure of water stick upwards and not allow the water to come out then we've removed the flow turbines cable after that we've removed the hose from the condensate trap this little clip uh, holds the trap in position so lift it up and then pull the trap up so we've just pulled or pushed the trap downwards there was space between the pipes we've pushed it down and taken it out we've opened the aav the automatic air vent this spanner which is 24 millimeters is usually good for a 15 millimeter uh, nut be it a uh, any compression joint and uh, loosen that up and always keep a hot water tap on besides it to it to be able to drain it off uh, any any water in the cold water and hot water circuit uh, undo the nut slowly and uh, while after it's drained down then pull the pipe from where the flow turbine sits on the top right hand corner further loosen the nut so always loosen it slowly to start with to allow the water to drain away through the taps and slowly and gradually remove the flow turbine assembly uh, with the pipe on the cold water side of things um, and then undo the locking nut on the return the primary return after that we've removed the pumps cable uh, to be able to further turn the locking nut on the return primary return we turned it to sort of three o'clock position then it releases the joint i've just wedged uh, a, a spanner or a long um, anything long enough to sort of lever the pipe upwards to get released from the top of the pump now the two clips which are holding the expansion vessels hose and the the pressure gauges hose in we've released the two clips and then i always use wd-40 on it before i start to attempt even attempt to start removing it this loosens any lime scale or rust in these joints this joint almost always requires a lot of uh, wrestling with it you, you do need to turn it round twist it and then pull it upwards after that i've removed the clip which retains the pump in position sits on the right side of the pump and then with the help of a long flathead screwdriver I've removed the pump from the position okay so after the pumps out uh, have a look at the pump the this is the top and the washer which sits on the top of the pump I always replace it and see if anything's damaged or leaking from where it shouldn't be leaking and with a good inspection you can find out any possible further problems to the pump or this assembly all right so after that again WD-40 on the bypass pipe uh, just to be able to release it relatively easily when we're going to be removing the return manifold so this little clip i pulled it forward in order in order to release it so um, the manifold can come out when we start to wrestle with it again and um, after that the nut on the return pipe which comes from the heating the heating return uh, loosen it up after that what we're going to do is obviously we're going to cover the back of the PCB the the circuit board assembly and uh, take a long crosshead or Phillips screwdriver undo the two screws which is one this one is holding the plate heat exchanger in position loosen it up 
um, and completely and then the second screw which sits next to it is the one which is actually holding the return assembly in position okay and then we'll pull on little lever in order to release the prv pull it down wiggle it jiggle it and pull it down with a bit of force so the prv gets released from that little connection further loosened up the return nut from the heating pipe um, levered it up the whole return assembly upwards in order to release it you can see that i've pushed the plate i haven't opened the plate or loosened up the plate from the other side from the flow uh, flow um, flow manifold i've rather pushed the plate back and the whole assembly i'm pushing with my thumb rightwards okay so it comes off so i'm turning the front of the return manifold left and i'm pushing with my left hand rightward so uh, sort of clockwise i've removed it so this is the state of as you can see uh, the return assembly it has leaked everywhere which you couldn't see from the front anything barely was visible but now you can see it's it's poured everywhere all right so after that uh, because the plate uh, we saw was in a state it was quite dirty so we removed the plate so we can replace it later as you can see that where the heating water passes is literally blocked with black rust and it's, it's discolored into black color all right so we'll place place the plate heat exchanger aside this is a 12 plate as you can see the 12 where i'm pointing at the moment it's a 12 plate heat exchanger plate heat exchanger um so i've, I've just checked that the the washers the o-rings for the plate heat exchanger are still in place this is the part number for the return manifold this part number is for the manifold which does not come with a diverter valve motor all right so it might be a bit different to from what you know so the two uh, side by side you can see the difference the old one is completely knackered now we remove the clip which retains the connection for the heating's return pipe which we undid earlier okay so we uh, with the help of this spanner which i've got um, among the long nose pliers we remove the connection it's got a, a thick old o-ring on it uh, which holds it sometimes well uh, forced into position remove it always grease it it's it's very rarely flattened so i'm going to use the same o-ring to put it back in okay so i place it on the floor if you try to put it in with free hands with both hands it won't go in best way is to place the brass fitting down and then force your return unit onto it and then it goes uh, relatively easily okay so now the retaining clip for this uh, connection goes in and you, you i have to I had to tap it uh, to make it go or sit all the way home this is as you can see the inside of the collar is sitting right next to the brass so there's no there shouldn't be any distance or any space between the clip and the brass connection so to remove the old uh, turbine adapter the flow turbine adapter uh, it always breaks it's um, part of it is left inside part of it goes outside so this is the old one it breaks where the nut normally sits on this assembly so this is the the flow restrictor which adjusts the flow according to the size of the boiler so the hot water is correctly adjusted as uh, and it comes out as the boiler can cope with so this is the new um, to flow turbine adapter this is the part number um, for the new one so we'll remove it from the packaging and there are o-rings which need to go on this one obviously we'll we'll put the flow restrictors back in uh in this direction so you can see it the yellow one is visible from the side where there is no nut okay okay so then we put the nut nut back on uh, onto the back side of it okay now for the two o-rings the smaller one goes at the front obviously on the smaller side the first ever time i tried to um, or when i replaced this adapter i couldn't figure out where the big one goes the big o-ring so this is where the big o-ring sits just behind the nut okay not on the other side so um put these o-rings on and then lubricate them well with the help of uh silicon grease okay not uh permanently setting silicon just silicon grease is okay and then push it in in this position okay so the flow turbine sits at the front adapter goes at the back all right so this is the little clip which holds the prv in position there's a little lock behind it you have to push it down in order to remove it and uh, so i just show you showed you how to remove it with this clip 
you you will need to slightly open it up or make the clip a little bit loose this is how it goes in so my uh, the hand on the right is the bottom of the of the whole manifold and this is if you if you look at it from the bottom if it's fitted in the boiler so this is um this is how this clip goes in and the little locking mechanism on the clip it stops the clip from coming out hence it keeps the prv in position okay there is a little fitting which goes in this space never forget this because i've forgotten it once in the past and uh, i finished everything and as soon as i started to fill it up it it it, there was water everywhere okay so this is the little brass fitting which goes in there with the little o-ring uh, which you can't miss there is only probably one or two the same size smallest o-rings which go onto this uh, little brass um, fitting which goes in there o-ring goes in push it in if it's well lubricated uh, ideally with silicon grease it will go in uh, a lot uh, very easily okay and there is another clip which uh, which will hold this in place this is a relatively smaller uh, clip and this is how the clip goes in okay again a locking mechanism which is on the lower side of it and now this is the new o-ring a big old o-ring which sits where the pump goes onto this manifold which we put in always wherever you put o-rings new ones or old ones always lubricate them with silicon non-setting silicon grease okay uh, some silicon goes into where the flow turbine is for the cold water so when we put the cold water pipe in it it, it does not resist okay so now to put the two new o-ring seals or the uh, rubber seals for the plate heat exchanger which goes right at the back it disappears from our site so we push this in it really falls off so you don't really have to worry about it okay so coming back to the boiler now we'll lubricate with silicon grease the bypass um, the pipe the o-ring which is on the bypass now this little rubber grommet this goes into this place on the return manifold which takes the screw which actually holds the manifold in place so this this screw the pointy one which comes in the pack the one with a pointed tip is the one which will go into this rubber grommet to to be able to hold the whole assembly in place all right after this we will slide the the return assembly in but we will put it in sort of diagonally and pushing the front uh, towards the left side so we can put the whole assembly see we've tilted it slightly diagonal uh, so we can put the, the the bypass easily in so if it's lubricated well if the if the o-ring is clean it will go in nicely okay make sure you push it leftwards so the manifold has gone on to the bypass okay so to keep the bypass in place we will uh, loosely put the screw in uh, into the boiler's chassis the boiler's body so the the manifold is held in place all right so this is the back of the whole manifold we've tapped it from underneath in order to push the assembly which we took off so now we are going to renew always i would always renew the the fiber seals any any seals especially the fiber seals which sit on these connections because you can take a risk but if it leaks while you're trying to finish it it, it will be a pain to replace it then all right so now we we've tightened the nut which will hold the return assembly onto the body of the boiler now to lubricate the o-ring which sits on the expansion vessels hose and then at the same time we'll replace will not replace we'll lubricate the o-ring which is on the pressure gauges o-ring okay the the little capillary hoses o-ring so this is the new plate heat exchanger and this one as opposed to uh, or different from the other one this is a 14 plate plate heat exchanger so it's slightly bigger it allows um more rust to, to accommodate in the plate heat exchanger so even if the system's a bit dirty not being clean it's got a bit more space obviously if you've got space behind the boiler to put put a thicker plate heat exchanger then why not put a bigger one which will have less trouble so i've put checked both uh, left hand right hand side behind the flow and return manifolds to make sure that the o-rings the seals for the plate heat exchanger are still in place this is the screw which is going to hold the plate heat exchanger in position all right so we will tighten it in at this point so it, the plate heat exchanger is left in position and it's completely tightened we will then uh, put the screw on the left hand side the flow manifold as well it's time for the pump to go back in um, so because we had the o-ring nicely lubricated where the pump is going to sit the big old o-ring which we put in earlier 
um, so it gives us uh, uh, no struggle to put it in after that the retaining clip for the pump goes into place uh, we had replaced the the seal we uh, on top of the pump earlier which I didn't show and this little little lip has to sit inside where, where I've just shown repeated the clip uh, a few times just to show you how it's done so uh, and you put the locking clip back into position it rotates clockwise okay at the same time I've loosened up the AAV so when we fill it up fill the system up it starts to release any air and it doesn't get trapped so now because we had it lubricated the expansion vessels hose it's gone in nicely we put the clip back in um, and now for the clip capillary hose for the pressure gauge it goes in nice and easy clip goes back in even more silicon grease this time it goes on to the the pipe the cold supply uh, cold feed pipe which will sit here on in front of the the flow turbine okay so we will push that in uh, not push it in completely first we'll place it into position then do the nut up loosely and then push this in so both are in the correct position okay now for the clip uh, always remember the straight side of the clip goes on the right side and always put that in first all right on the right side put it in uh, always push the pipe and put the clip in okay so you're now sure that the the whole assembly is sitting nicely and the clips gone in and then uh, the left side goes in but you will then need to push the left side slightly leftwards in order to slightly stretch it and then put it in on the left side where it should be sitting with the help of a long nose plier I have nipped the clip back into position so it's nicely locked and it's not going anywhere all right now the cable goes back in for the floor turbine uh, so we don't miss it now this is just a retaining clip because this this return assembly this can go on a system boiler as well where you don't really need a diverter valve inside the boiler or a diverter valve motor should I say so it comes this assembly this part this specific part number I showed you earlier comes without a, div uh, a diverter valve motor all right so with the help of a screwdriver we've uh, pushed up the little paddle inside the diverter valve and we push the motor back into its position all right again check that the AAV is nice and loose now to finally tighten the retaining screw and make sure all the screws are tightened um, on the plate heat exchanger on the manifold itself the, especially the one which we've replaced now to uh, tighten up the nuts on the cold water supply and then the heating return pipe all right don't go crazy when tightening so um, the the trap goes back into position always dry it off so it doesn't give you any uh, any confusion um, if it's still dripping or if it's got residual water in it and you push it in you can't tell even if it's leaking you'll think that it's just residual water so dry it off put some silicon grease on top of the big old o-ring it's got uh, put the trap into position and the little locking mechanism will hold it on in 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 its position at the top all right even more silicon grease it, this time it goes into the rubber hose which will connect on to the condensate trap and this way you don't have to push and shove and struggle with the hose and it goes on very nice and easy all right blue on the the plug for the pump just making sure there is no moisture there is no water in it now for the time uh of truth we've opened up the supplies we've opened up the cold water to this to the boiler now for the pressurizing um we're pushing the pressure in the the filling loop is in in a completely different location so I've, uh, i could only film the gauge so now the boiler is all pressurized and we've checked and made sure there are no leaks in the boiler nothing's leaking no drips and um, we've turned it on and we've tested that everything is working fine of course always do the 26.9 checks and this is how this job is done thank you very much for watching the video if you like the video please uh, share it like it and uh, leave us a comment and uh, I will see you in the next video thanks again